Hey guys, Gavin here. Today I want to show you how and why I use color grading versions in DaVinci Resolve because it's such an important part of my workflow. So let's first start with the why. I had to learn this the hard way as a young colorist a few years back when I was dealing with a difficult client at that time. We had worked on a hero shot for quite some time and he told me, let's do this grading adjustment. Let's do that grading adjustment. And I did everything he wanted. And then suddenly he said, oh no, let's, let's just go back to the version we had because we liked it so much. And I didn't have a version of that. You know, I did several adjustments on the shot and I couldn't go back. And he, he got a bit angry and I totally learned from that situation that every time you do ma major adjustments or even small ones when you know you can't really go back by just you know going option z or control z on pc um, every time that happens you just do a new version you can go back and you can show them several versions another very important situation is when the client sits next to you or it doesn't matter if the client sits next to you if it's a remote session online or if you're working by yourself even for yourself, you want to always go back or be able to go back to a version you had before. And you always want to be able to show the people the changes that you did. You know, a lot of times clients will tell you, hey, can you can you compare with the version before? Then you want to have a version of that before status and you want to go, always go back to it and you want to switch between those versions to show the people the changes that you just made. So the main point I want to make here is that grading is a very small scale process where a lot of changes are being made every few seconds and you always want to be in control of that whole process so you can always go back, you can always compare, you can always show the client what you did, you can always, you know, you have a safe state of every little step that you're making. And then of course there's the obvious situation of you starting a new project um, you pick some hero shots for the client you uh, make like three or four versions of the grade that are quite different so the client can decide on which version to grade with and you can pick it up from there we are in davinci resolve now and we have this little example project open here um, and i have some red 4k red raw footage whatever doesn't matter um so first of all you go on this shot you do a right click and you have those local versions here so you have local versions and remote versions so you can also do versions for remote means in this case it's um, media pool wide so um, if you have shots that repeat itself in the project you can do versions for all the shots that are repeated in this project so if this shot here that i have the surfing shot is repeated in one of the other timelines in this davinci resolve project you can also um, choose those versions that you created but here we do a local version i already renamed it rec 709 because this is just the rec 709 image the red default and right click here we do a Create, create a new version and we just call this one uh, warmer so enter and we're already in it so you create one you're in it right away um, I renamed it I would always I would try to rename the versions that you have so you would just have a bit more overview in the end of course sometimes there's no time and I have some projects where I have 10 different versions and they're all called uh, version 1 to 10 all the way through so it's it's not always easy but try to do it um, so we just go in here and I will just make it a bit warmer and now when you go in DaVinci Resolve here in the menu you can go to keyboard customization there's the same menu on the PC and we type in version here then we already see here color grade version and you add a new version with command y you go to the next version with command n n for next and you go to the previous version with command b you can just uh, think of before with that one so it's quite easy to remember um 
So we have this warmer version now, and now we go with command B and we're back to rec 709. You can see it in the top corner there, top left corner and before, next, before, next. Okay. And it always copies. So when I, when I do a new version from this one here, so I just go command Y, a color grading version is added. So I go right click here. I have a version three now and I just rename it um, saturated or we name it more saturated. Okay. And it copied all the changes that we had in this previous version. And if I go now and make it more saturated, go command B. So warmer again, rec 709, warmer, more saturated is loaded. And now if you want to see, um, it also takes all the notes with it. So this one here, this is the fourth version now. No, it's not. I do a fourth version. Um, so a new version has been added. This one also has two notes now with all the changes that you did. And I go um, B, more saturated C. It also changes the number of the notes. It takes everything from the version that you're creating a new version of, okay? And so this one is called version four now. It's just, a, you know, I wanted to show you that with the notes. Um, so it's actually quite simple and you can memorize it quite easily. And uh, I'm sure if you use it a lot, you will, it will just, become second nature for you. And it's very, very helpful for big projects or when you're working with clients, like I said, and you will learn when to create a new version as well. So there, there are certain moments when you just know, okay, I should be doing a new version now. And also when, when you have tiny increments of changes, it, sometimes it's very useful to create a new version so the people will just see what you just changed. Um, I hope you like this little tutorial. It's a bit, it's, it's more of a beginner's tutorial this time, but um, I think it's, it's an essential thing that you should learn about. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like, leave us up, leave a comment, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.